Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. And thank you for this time that you've given us to worship you and be with the, all the Sunday school teachers and be with them as they, as they teach your word and put it in our hearts and our minds for the wisdom and the knowledge that's in your word. Forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I was going to uh, at least put a thousand dollars on the credit card to finish paying for that funeral. So when I told her that the church sent her a thousand dollars, she was pretty much beside herself. <laughs> she said she felt like kind of like an Indian giver. I said, you're not an Indian giver. You're supposed to help one another. That's right. That's yeah. what happened. God knew she needed a thousand dollars. It happened the same way when she sent the pastor a thousand his wife up. God knew all that. Because 
and I like that first verse because he just expands on it up until the point where he starts talking about the uh, women as far as outlining them. And actually, First Timothy is just full of all the stuff like this. If you'd like to read it. It says, I, accept, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and holiness. And this is, this is praying for those that are in authority as we have it on our prayer request. Or anybody that we might encounter, encounter as far as that's concerned. But in 14 and 15. All right, I can't remember the exact quote, and I think it's in, it might be in Galatians. It says, the first Adam was made like after the flesh, and the second Adam was a quickening spirit. Was made a quickening spirit. I think, I think it says, I might have misquoted that. All right, and in 14 it says, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in the faith and charity and honesty. And holiness with sobriety. Now that we have the first Adam who was there and uh, they were hanging out in the garden as far as however long they were there. I'm not sure. I wouldn't dare to say either. And then she gets uh, tricked by the serpent. Oh, I, don't, I really am persuaded that it wasn't a snake because after, he, after God curses man and woman, he says the snake's going to crawl on its belly. So I think this was just a serpent as far as it's concerned. I don't think it was a snake. It matters a little though. And they didn't have belly buttons either. You know, we're like, who cares? But uh, as far as far as that's as far as that's concerned, she was seduced, and then Adam, and God says, Adam, where art thou? It's not that Adam, he didn't know where Adam was. There was that spiritual separation. He said that ye shall surely die, and he was talking about that actually a, a, phys, a physical death, but there was that spiritual separation, that spiritual death, the separation that he put in between his God because he decided, or they decided that they were going to go their own way as far as making their own rules are concerned. And uh, so he's like, well, it wasn't me, man. It was that woman you gave me. So was, he's trying to pass the buck there originally, which is what we all try to do. I mean, uh, I mean, as far as the, in the beginning, we all, we're all striving to be honest and better every day. So, I mean, I'm just saying he was trying to pass the buck. But uh, uh, ultimately had to accept the curse that was given to him, which was to work by the sword of thy brow shalt thou be bread until thou returns to the ground. For out of the ground wilt thou taken for the dust thou art, and under the dust shalt thou return. That's why I say that joke, we're all dirtbags. You know? But uh, <laughs> there, there's a picture that we have there, and then Paul says, that be, this is what the point I'm making, is that Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery concerning Christ and the church. And we have that quote, which is the first Adam, and which is the second Adam. So, we have a picture of what's going to happen in the future, way back there when it was just two people there. And they were getting booted out of the garden. Adam being that picture of Christ as far as uh, bearing the burden with the church. And then leaving together and going to be together. And as far as leaving your father and mother and clinging unto your wife. And another beautiful picture we have between the Christ and the church is that, is that is the relationship that they have. So if this church is that important. If the picture of the woman is the church, if a picture of the picture of Eve, who was the mother of all living, and we know that the church is the spiritual mother of all living to bring forth spiritual babies, as far as child, being children in Christ, if you will, spiritual babies into the world and continuing on with the things that Christ had given us, doesn't that make the church a little bit more important? Doesn't doesn't that picture make the, make it just seem a little bit clearer? Like there's people that sit and they're completely confident in their sayings. Well, I believe. I don't believe you have to go to church. Oh, well, sir. Yay, teacher. But hear this. That is, the church is very important. Oh, the, the underlying factor, it's, it's titanic. It's gargantuan. For lack of a better word, it's huge. And the only thing I would invite, or invite to your thoughts this morning as far as I'm concerned is if it was just up to you, just you. You were the only Christian as far as that's concerned. You are the only one going to church. And believe me, if there was just one person, if it was just me and I was by myself and I was the only Christian, I would be somewhere meeting with the Lord today because that's how we're supposed to do it. But I'm just saying, this, this is the thought. Is that if it was just up to you, visitation, preaching, exhortation, teaching of doctrine, uh, exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day, the day approaching as far as that's concerned, how good are we doing? Like if the church is that important, if it's if it's that linked to Christ, if it's the bride of Christ, if Christ 
Uh, it says, uh, no man, it, we're supposed to treat our wives as we treat our own flesh. For no man hateth his own flesh, but loveth and nourisheth it, which is exactly what Christ does for us. Not only as far as when we meet together in fellowship, but day after day in our daily lives, he's just loving us and nourishing us with everything that he has. So that makes it more important. Makes it a little, a little clearer as far as that goes. I'm just now touching on this subject, but I assure you when I say that it's huge and it spans the whole Bible, and it's just something, if there was nothing else to be excited about, this is something to be excited about. And it's the importance of the church as far as just maintaining it, keeping it pure, because Paul wrote, I think it was to the church that was at Corinth, I was present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Well, well why is that important as well? It's because the church has to remain pure and our dedication yeah. to each other. As far as us being the church and to the church itself, as far as its ministries goes, it just, I don't know, it's exciting, it's invigorating, it just gives you a little more push, your drive, as far as that's concerned. So, that's all I would say. It's like, how, how good are we doing? Like, if it was just up to you, how good are we doing? And this is something that I've been considering the last couple of days, and I'm like, man, we're doing horrible. Like, I've got to get moving here, and, and this is something I plan to do in the future as far as baby steps are concerned. But this is not just something I'd like to invite to you, is how, how good are we doing? If, if, if it's that important. And I, I used second, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 in just two verses as far as that's concerned and expanded on it just a little bit with just a little bit of the information that's found in the church concerning such things. I mean, how it's, it's huge and it's very, very, very important. And that's, that's it. That's all I got. Just invite time.